Thank you guys for coming back to another episode of Cobra TV. Today joining me uh, co-hosting this show is Sir Andalot. And if you don't know who Sir Andalot is, you need to. Because the video that he made, the Fanimation video of No Man's Sky is just absolutely brilliant. Um, say hello to everybody, Sir Andalot. Hey, everybody. Thanks for having me on the show, Cobra. Oh, dude, it's amazing. It's a pleasure of mine. I think I've watched your video like 50 times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the ending, dude, is just amazing. But uh, yeah, there, there's there's so many questions about the video that, you know, that I want to ask um, and, uh, you know, what you plan on doing in the future. But first, I want to talk about the PSX, uh, the video that um, Sean Murray did with uh, uh, Yoshida. And yeah. what, what did you think about that? I thought it was, I, I saw it, I watched a, a couple of videos and I saw him, uh, saw him doing it. It was just another, another, uh, another video that was put out that kind of blew my mind a little bit more, just giving us a, a bit more of a taste, you know? Exactly. Of, of what we have to expect. I particularly found it hilarious, the point when he was getting overrun by Sentinels. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> gosh. Did you see how many of those drones are in the sky? Yeah. He, he shot like two of them and then there were 20. He just turned around for one second. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's amazing, that video, because uh, he's a very seasoned developer. You know what I mean? So yes, uh, for yes. Sean Murray to let someone that experienced play his game, it, you know, that... And, and, okay, now the guy's nice. He's a nice guy, uh, Yoshida. Mm -hmm. um, but at the end where he said he discovered something he said that uh not only is the game fun to watch on tv and like all the, the gameplay that the uh, hello games releases but he said it's even more fun to play and he can't stop i uh i'm pretty sure that a lot of things that um he encountered while he was playing were edited out i'm pretty sure i that he was playing a lot of other stuff that they did not let us see you, you know I, what i'm I saying i would assume i would assume the same thing yeah and, and one of those things that I want to talk about is there's another, it seems like here lately, all the videos that we've been getting um, have had like a bipedal creature in it. And in uh, that gameplay, there was actual, there's actually a bipedal creature. Uh, yeah, that little waddly thing, eh? <laughs> yeah, it had like these little horns and my, reminded me of something you would see on Boundless. Uh, but it started, the thing, you know, shocked me is that uh, there's a scene where he's coming over uh, like a grassy hill and there's like a, a, a drop down and you can see one for like a millionth of a second and then it gets edited out and then during that gunfight with all the drones and stuff that creature, that bipedal creature instead of it running away from all the danger it runs directly into fire yeah, that was crazy it, towards the player it runs like <laughs> towards the player and I was waiting to see if like um you know, there was going to be damage taken to the character as it got close, but then it, it stopped. It, it it changed screens, and I'm like, oh, man. But the fact that that two-legged creature was running towards the character, it was running towards danger, not away from it, Yeah, kind of made me scratch my head a little bit. Well, that's, that goes along with what uh, Sean was saying about how we're not going to have just um, programmed AI in a sense. There's going to be a whole process behind it. Different creatures are going to behave differently, right? Right. So it should be interesting to see what some of the different um, different behavioral patterns from right. different exactly. creatures. I'll tell you what, I, I want to see more. It, 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 it was awesome to see that, but, you know, I'm just a No Man's Sky junkie and it's not enough <laughs> for me. I want more. <laughs> yeah, definitely, but definitely. Let's get on to your video. I want to talk about your video. You, sure. You made this awesome video. and uh, oh, Thank you. <laughs> I, I got to ask a question, and I hope I don't get too much hate out of this. Um, towards the ending, did you mm -hmm. do the pop in on purpose? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. There, there were a few comments about that, and let me tell you, that is something that was actually one hundred percent an accident. Oh, really? It was a technical. <laughs> it was a technical accident on my fault because I had the render distance of the camera. Yeah. I have going to a certain distance, and then I have the mist or the the um, the air, the, the atmospheric whatever you want to call it <laughs> you know when i seen sure. that that was just i i laughed you know i laughed i i didn't you know i i thought it was done on purpose to tell you the truth 
I think a few other people did as well, actually. It's perfect. Actually, it's it's. Uh, did you notice it before you upload it? I noticed it um, in the final rendered version. Uh, like I I rendered each scene and whatever, and I was editing it together. And yeah. as I was watching it, doing the sound effects and stuff, I I looked at that shot and I was like, crap. <laughs> I didn't realize there's always one thing. There's always one thing yeah. that, that you never notice. <laughs> yeah, but it's so perfect, dude. It's like they, you gotta you gotta you gotta look at something like that and be like, Yeah, I did that on purpose. Just, uh, you know. <laughs> well I, I guess I should I guess I should really. I shouldn't be saying it. <laughs> I should be yeah, totally it's a reference, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, so the ending, when he sits there and he lands near those monoliths, what it, what were you, uh, are you just trying to create a mystery or did you have a, I don't know, like a story behind that? Um, I, at the time, I didn't really have an idea for a story or something like that. I was just kind of going off of, there was one particular screenshot from like a year ago or something, which has similar structures in the background. Yeah. Uh, this triangle, right. triangular prism type things. Uh, and I mean, some people saw it as a 2001 Space Odyssey reference, which mm. is really cool. I didn't intend for it that way. I was just kind of going for suspense at the end, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, but now, now I'm, I mean, the more people ask me questions about it, the more ideas I'm getting. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> I, I might have to do something with this. <laughs> I think so, dude. I would I would like to see a, a series, you know, going. And especially something to keep us busy and while you know, while we're waiting for the game to come out. And then once the game does come out, you can actually use the game to carry on your story. I mean that is something that I was um was thinking with the, when the game comes out, I'd like to do kind of a video thing with that. Yeah. I like, ma I like making videos. Um but into, I mean, series is a is a pretty big word. It's a lot of work, but definitely I want to do at least one more animation. I'm taking it like one step at a time. I want to do another one, uh -huh. and uh, I'm getting a lot of ideas already. That's for sure. That's good. Good to hear, man. I'm gonna definitely keep a watch out for anybody that <laughs> wants to follow Sir Andalot. There's uh, I'm gonna put the, his his uh, Twitter account link below and his uh, YouTube channel. So make sure you go over and subscribe and keep an eye out for some more awesome work. Um, so how long have you been into No Man's Sky? Uh, into No Man's Sky, I've been uh, I've been really into it for the past few months, maybe uh -huh. four or five, six months or something like that. Um, but it's strange because I realized I had heard about it about a year and a half ago, and at the time, uh, I was looking around at some comments and someone said like, "Yeah, it's not going to be out for another three years." So at the time, I was like, "All right, I'm not going to devote a lot of energy to this." I'll come back to it later. And something, something made me look it up uh, like half a year ago or something. And I found this footage, the E3 stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it blew my mind completely. And um, right. Ever Those since space then, I've been, battles. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Ever since and the planets and, and stuff. And ever since then, I've been I've been following it. And what made me start to think about doing the animation was actually Laughtercraft's animation. Yeah, oh, another good channel. Yes, definitely. Definitely, yeah. I've been watching his stuff. I'm looking forward to him putting out another one. Oh, me too. Um, and I saw I saw his thing, and I was like, wow, I, I want to do this as well. So it was... Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing how much, um, I don't want to call it hype. It's not really hype, like Destiny hype or Watchdog hype. It's, uh, it's, a diff it's different. You know, it it's, is. It's like yeah. this big community following a game that's not even out yet. Um, the, the developers are very honest about what their game is, what it can do, what it's about. And, um, I'm sure, you know, there's no trickery, you know what I mean? Like most yeah. developers do. And so what you see in the trailers or in some of the gameplay is what you get. And a lot of people, including myself, I'm happy with what I see. And so I'm happy with what I'm going to get. Now, a lot of people out there, they wish for this and they wish for that. They want this and they want that. They want building. They want, you know, a lot of people want a bunch of stuff. And I don't think it's going to create a letdown for some people because they know, they know that it's not in the game. So yeah. the hype behind this game, I think and feel that it's very healthy. I think you're right. And I, I think you're also right in saying that it's not it's not the type of hype that we're used to with these with these huge games with so much anticipation. Yeah. A lot of it now I see is not so much hype, but inspiration. There's a lot of creativity happening. Oh yeah. There's a lot of people making stuff. There are a lot of people writing stories oh, already. Yes. yes. You know, which are awesome. I mean, like 
if there's one thing that gets me makes me kind of happy when about these type of things it's that when people get inspired to make things themselves yeah i really love that yeah on exploringms.com we've got people that have written tons of stories and i sometimes i sit there when i get off work and I'll just sit there and I'll read, you know, through some of them. I'm just amazed at what the, you know, the, at the talent that's out there. And this game, uh, not even released yet, has already brought out some of that talent into the world. Yeah. And I think it's freaking awesome. I do have ideas for another animation. I have some some stuff in my mind. I have some sketches drawn out on loose leaf paper uh -huh. um, in my folder. But... I do love hearing other people's ideas. So if anyone has any sort of ideas, uh, either like technical aspects, what I could do better, like I know there are some things with the animation example pop in <laughs> that I, <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to fix a little bit, but also just like concept ideas, story ideas, little snippets of you know you have sometimes those images of just like a one and a half second clip where like boom you warp in into a huge space battle and and there are lasers everywhere and stuff and yeah that kind of thing i love to hear that because it gives me more ideas and if i'm able to make another animation that's amazing and if i'm able to include some of the community's ideas that's even more amazing oh definitely um and, and as far as uh you know everybody comment down below if you got any ideas for sir and a lot and also Sir Andalot, go over to exploreandms.com and go into the section on the forum called Your Story. And I'm sure that anybody who wrote stories in there would love for you to use some of their uh, content in oh, one of I your will. videos. For sure. Um, they would be more than happy. Uh, but yeah, there's tons of content in there. I mean, stuff that I, I didn't even... There's people that I know personally that wrote stories in there. And I'm like, what? <laughs> I didn't know you could write. <laughs> but it's just pretty cool how the game sparks uh, so much imagination from people. It is. It really is. It's like, it, it, it's almost as if, because I've been doing animation stuff for a while, but a lot of it has just been messing around, doing the test here, whatever. Throw some cubes into this thing, see what happens. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, No Man's Sky it provided me with the opportunity to work off of something, a concept that someone has already had, and kind of build on that like i suck at designing my own spaceships so but i'm like technically not that bad at making them so i was able to take the no man's sky the procedurally generated ship and model that right um and it, it gave me sort of an opportunity to to work with some sort of continuity you know i had an end goal that i was going for i wasn't just messing around this time yeah i wrote out a, i drew out a storyboard i wrote out my shot list and stuff i wow. did the planning and everything and uh yeah it was uh it, it, it was something for me to uh for me to work on with with an end goal in sight and i think that's what a lot of people are seeing is that they have they have an idea all it takes is just one little kind of spark of idea like you said of inspiration and yeah. it gets them drawing, it gets them writing or drawing or painting. Can you give anybody like a, you know, like a tease on what you might be coming out with next? <laughs> even if it's not, even if it's not No Man's Sky related, because I went through your channel and I looked at some of your other stuff, and uh, you got some pretty cool stuff on your channel. Oh, um, some things you've experimented around with, and uh, but you know, what can people expect to see next, and maybe when? Uh, well, in terms of uh, just general stuff, I I was experimenting recently with a little bit of. Uh, procedural terrain generation yeah I've seen that stuff uh, a little bit of programming and i have another video of that that i am probably going to put up within the next week or two mm -hmm. or something uh aside from that i'm not sure these little side projects just happen whatever but in terms of the next no man's sky animation feature um i'm thinking the general style i'm gonna go for is more um more epic trailer type of thing oh i uh, see yeah, make it uh, make it intense. Really try and outdo myself on the last one. <laughs> yeah, uh, a trailer. It'd be cool to include like all the things that you can do in No Man's Sky. You know, like a little bit of the mining, a little bit of the fighting. You know, so that way, because uh, a lot of people ask, even still, what do you do in No Man's Sky? Right. And one of the things I loved about the I've Seen Things trailer is it kind of touches on a lot of those things that you can do. So I, it might be even cool to like title it. Uh, what can you do in No Man's Sky? And it's just like this cool trailer doing all these things. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. That that's that's definitely something to consider. I hadn't I hadn't thought of it that way. In terms of like the multiplayer aspect, you know, a lot of people are saying like, oh, I want to be able to play with my friends. I want to be able to find whatever. And 
almost the first whenever I tell someone new about like No Man's Sky, yeah, almost the first thing is like, are there like coordinates? Can you like find people? And I'm like, well, not really, or like not that we know of at least, right? Um, and they're kind of like, oh, that's that's weird. Like you'd think if it's a multiplayer game, they'd have some sort of system like that. But personally, I kind of enjoy the idea of being alone in the universe with just a very very small possibility of running into someone else i do too and i've said in the past you know like i th uh, co-op would be really fun um but it's it's a lot more fun because sean murray did say you can meet with your friend but it would be very hard mm -hmm. i think that difficulty level to be able to meet up with someone that you know is an adventure all in itself yeah you know, i think that that is a, a lot cooler than having a simple beam over to your friend. I agree. I mean, it would be really cool to see maybe like <laughs> like two YouTube channels do a joint um, playthrough where they yeah. try and find each other. Oh, yes. Uh, there's a one of my subscribers, his name's uh, That Josh Guy. Him and his wife, Angie, do plan on uh, playing together on PC, I believe. And they're going to try and find each other. Husband That's or, or they're, Oops, they're not husband and wife. I got yelled at for that. They're boyfriend and girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. I think I got Josh in trouble that night. But um, but yeah, they plan on having a YouTube channel where they meet each other. That's a really cool idea. That's mm -hmm. and that's neat. I think I mean the uh, the value of No Man's Sky playthroughs is going to be something really interesting to observe when it uh, when it comes out because no one's game is going to be the same. Exactly. It's, it's not like Minecraft where you can like type in the same seed or play online with your friends or whatever. It's something where you're literally scattered across an entire galaxy. Yeah, exactly. So. And I, you know, I think it's it it's more valuable uh, on an entertainment level to have an adventure just to get with your friend, even if there's no real interaction. Just you know, you could sit there and be like, "Yay, we did it!" <laughs> it's a goal. People like that's the thing about this game, right? You can make up your own. You make up your own quests, make up your own goals and stuff. I mean, the ultimate kind of stated, unstated goal is the center of the galaxy thing, right? right. But yeah. um, it's all about, like, some people are going to stay on a planet the whole time. Like Sean Murray said, they're going to be like, wow, this is a beautiful planet. I want to live here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like he's always said in the past, it's not core of the game for this. It's not core of the game for that. The core of the game is to get... I'm not call it a goal, but the core of the game is to get to the center of the first galaxy that we start in. Mm -hmm. um, so anything else is not core to the game, but you can do it. You know, you can stay on one planet forever, you know, and never leave. Never. I don't know anybody that's going to do that. You, <laughs> there might be one person out there somewhere that'll do it just so they can say they're the only one that did it. That's true. Uh, it's. <laughs> I mean, who, everyone has their own play style. That's it. Yeah, exactly. You know, you know what I'm looking forward to most about the game is literally just coming up to something, either it's an animal or a landscape or a planet or whatever, and being so surprised or shocked or something that I yeah. just did not expect it at all. Exactly. Yeah. There's two moments that I can't wait for in No Man's Three: <laughs> meeting up with one of my friends. Number one. Number two, finding a planet that's a, that's like scary. You know, where the the environment is scary, it's dark, um, the animals are aliens that are on that planet, they're vicious, you know, like a, it turns the game into like a horror game while you're on that planet. Um, and the third is finding a planet so awesome that I don't want to leave, that I have a hard time leaving. Yeah, that's, I, I'm totally there, totally right there with you. I'm just imagining all the possibilities now. Yeah. And I know I'm not imagining them all because I can't possibly and I'm looking forward to finding it so. right <laughs> and you gotta think um, Hello Games is only showing you what they want us to see because they yes. don't want the game yeah. ruined for us when we finally get it so we're seeing just bare bones of what the game yeah. is you know like the, the the cute little creatures we've already seen that creatures can be as big as dinosaurs or sandworms and stuff like that so they're holding everything back so that way we're still shocked yes I mean they, they showed us that that one clip of the sandworm, and that was like the only clip with any animal sort of like that. So you got to wonder what else is there. Yeah, right? exactly. Th there's yes. got to be crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah, definitely. So you've also worked on games too, right? Uh, a little bit. I've experimented a bit. I'm I'm going to school in computer science right now, so it's it's kind of my thing. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. 
Okay, uh, Sir Andalot, thank you so much for being on the show, dude. I appreciate it, man. Your work is just amazing, and I can't wait to see more of it. Thank you so much for having me. It was a real pleasure to be on here. Definitely, definitely. And anybody that uh, is interested in Sir Andalot, please check the description below all of his links, his Twitter account, his YouTube channel. Um, go over, check him out. I guarantee you. You watch the No Man's Sky. What is it called exactly? Uh, the the animation. Yeah. It's called Artifact. Artifact. Watch the video Artifact. You will not be sorry. It's pretty good. Really good. All right, guys. Thank you uh, for watching another episode of Cobra TV and Sir Andalot. You have a good day, buddy. You too, man. All right. Bye, dude. Bye.